everybody. Welcome to another Easy Links Live. I'm your host, Ryan Bukema, and on today's show, today we're going to be continuing our conversations from last time. We're going to be highlighting some of the items that came out on our big Q3 release, and these are some items that we think you guys are going to be interested in. So let's go ahead and get started with some of the enhancements that we made in Client Center for our commercial lines customers. So one of the things that's really neat about Client Center, I'm sure you all know by now, is it's your 24-7 digital representative. So your agency can be closed in the evening, they can be closed over the weekend, and your insurance can go there and handle policy items, like they can request changes, they can make payments, they can download ID cards. Client Center is this extremely valuable tool for your agency, and we've made some enhancements there for our commercial customers. So with the Q3 release, we've added the ability for your insureds to request driver schedule changes for their commercial auto policies. So let's get Client Center pulled up real quick here in Easy Links and let's take a look at some of these cool changes. Okay, so uh, now that we're in Client Center, uh, let's go ahead and do, so everybody who's not familiar, this is Client Center. And from here, your insureds can gather ID cards, they can get certificates, they can look at their policies, they can make payments if they wanted to. But let's go ahead and navigate over to the policies. This is where your insurance can view all their policies and this happens to be, once again, a commercial customer who has an auto policy and we're gonna wanna go in and look at the drivers and edit those. So if we view the policy, we can see all the great information, the limits, the coverages. I mean, this is very well laid out for them. But for the sake of today's demo, we're actually gonna go up and click, there you go, change request. Okay, so you gotta choose what type of change request it is, right? Is it a general request where you just want an additional item changed or something, or do you wanna actually add or remove drivers? So we're gonna click on add or remove drivers. And instead of editing the existing ones, what we wanna do today, or maybe even deleting a driver, we're just gonna add a brand new one. So you have to fill out a couple of fields. So we're kind of filling this, this is Hank, John, with a male, date of birth, let's put in there, uh, 11, 15, 1981. All right, all right. Marital status, actually, you know, hold on here. Slash 15, slash 1981. Okay. Uh, marital status, uh, single. I mean, you can, your insurance can fill out whatever they'd like. Okay, the state that they were licensed. Obviously, it's going to be Texas. Uh, and this street location here, you can put in either their address or the address of the, the company. I'm just going to go ahead and put in the uh, address for the actual insured, just to keep it easy. Drive, and that's gonna be in Fort, oh, Fort, type in Fort Worth. All right, and then we'll put in for state, Texas, and then zip code 76, uh, let's say uh, 109. Yeah, that's a good zip. Years of experience, that would be years of experience actually driving. So we can put in, he's been doing it for like 21 years. And then this is gonna be the hire date. So this is gonna be when they were actually hired on at the company. Let's say that they were hired on possibly maybe last week, right? Okay, so we're gonna save these changes, right? And then what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and this is the driver we're doing. We're not adding anybody else. We're not, if they wanted to remove it or maybe they made a pro, had a problem with it, they could go back and edit what they were adding. But if they go ahead and hit continue, the effective date is when do you want this change to be effective? So let's say that we want this thing to be effective the end of the week, right? If you want to add additional items to it, you can. And then here's where your insurance can actually type a note to you. Uh, we can say, please uh, get this updated. I acknowledge, I understand. And what you're going to do is you go ahead and the customers, your insurance would click this submit the change request. It's going to process everything, and then it's going to let them know that, hey, your change request has been sent. Now, what does this mean for uh, the insurance agency? What does this mean for you, the agent? Well, let's actually go in here. So let's log in and let's go to this customer's account. It was Black Bear Brewing, right? This is a brewery, a microbrewery. And we can see, oh, oh, look, we got a task that got created. So let's go ahead and pull up this upcoming task. Oh, it's an actual task for a change request. So whenever they put in the change request, guys, um, we're going to go ahead and create a task for you to actually get the job done, right? We can see when it actually needs to be done by, which is when they actually are needing it. We can see the change request information all right down here that they've actually wanted to add, right? All this information is right there and ready to go for them. And it's neat because it always already selects the policy that this is going to apply to. So this is, this is really cool. And if you have the, the feature, the automatic change request confirmation put in, so say, for example, the change request gets put in, you add it into the system, 
our system basically waits for the downloaded change request to come in. And when that does, through the automation that we have in EasyLinks, we'll look at the change requests. And if they add up and they're the same thing, then the automatic change request confirmation that we already have running in EasyLinks, it's going to go in there, it's going to approve the change request, and close it out for you, and you're done. So pretty cool. I mean, this is a really nice feature to be able to have for your commercial audio customers, for them to be able to go in, edit their drivers, add drivers, maybe remove a driver if they want, or just submit a general request um, you know, in general. So the next thing that I want to talk about, if we go ahead and exit out of the workspace here, let's click on that professional liability policy down there. Now, we've made some uh, changes this sprint with some of the policy entry screens. So if we go ahead and uh, edit this and go into it to look at the screen, let's go ahead and click Save and Continue. Some things I want to really kind of highlight for you is kind of under the underwriting session. Now, we, we're in the process of a lot of our lines of business updating the look and the feel of them and making it easier for you guys to be able to um, navigate and see things. So under the underwriting tab, You'll now have these great expanded selectors where you can actually explain loss history, type in your loss history, and all these different fields expand now. So this is kind of new with the Q3 release. And the other thing that we want to kind of highlight here is the moving uh, of an actual area. So for example, policy contacts, well, where did they go? Well, we've actually added them under additional interest and policy contacts. So if you click that tab, this is where you can add in your policy contacts and you can see your additional interests and all this has just been rearranged to make it a little bit easier for you to be able to navigate, add the information you need, go back and review it when one of your insurers call in, provide them with the info they need and, and, and have them be able to go about their day and their business as they need to. So the next thing I want to talk about here is an update that we made within Zapier, so the Zapier app. So in order to get to that, actually we need to log out. So let's log out real fast. Let's go here. And I want to come over to this area right up there where it says partners. Select partners. And this happens to be one of our connect partners. And if we scroll down here, we can see all these great vendors that we integrate with, with EasyLinks Connect. And some of our previous um, EasyLinks Live, we've talked about some of these amazing integration opportunities. And if you're interested in that, I highly encourage you to come here, take a look at the integrations we have set up. Some of them are very easy to get set up for your agency, and you can start reaping the benefits of maybe additional income coming in. Uh, they're really, really good. Great uh, way to maybe manage your um, your actual communications or have your calendar open so people can make you know different appointments with you without back and forth emails. Really cool stuff. But let's focus on Zapier. So let's click on the Zapier integration real quick here. So um, to start off with, what I really want to kind of discuss before we jump into it is you know what is Zapier for those of you who aren't aware of what. Zapier is. So Zapier allows agents to connect the EasyLinks management system, okay, to thousands of different apps and programs that are out there in the market. It makes both integration, interactions, and automations hassle-free when you're integrating uh, Zapier, the EasyLinks app, with one of the partner apps that are in, in basically the Zap marketplace, right? It's easy to be able to share data in and out of the, the system. So, so for example, maybe you have information in Salesforce, right? And whenever you add an account in Salesforce, you want that account information to get migrated into EasyLinks. Well, how do you do that? Simple. You get set up with Zapier. You create a Zapier Zap like they've done right here. You choose what you want to have happen. So if a new account is created in Salesforce, I want it to duplicate that account and create it in the EasyLinks management system. And then vice versa. If I add an account in EasyLinks, I want it to push that information to Salesforce. And you can also do updates. So if the account is updated, it updates back and forth between the systems. The example that you're seeing right here is there's a new submission in a JOT form. So when a new submission happens, what's going to take place? So when that JOT form's added in, okay, well, we want it to create a personal uh, uh, account with an opportunity in EasyLinks. We want that to happen automatically every time that happens. So Zapier helps you guys automate the transferring of data in and out of systems, and then what happens in the different systems as well. Very, very powerful. So some of the some of the cool things that we've actually added with the Q3 release. So for example, with respect to notes, if you added a note in the system, we now have an outbound trigger for when the note is created. It can you can choose to make it do things in another system. The same thing if you add a note into another system. That inbound information can be received and then do stuff in EasyLinks. With respect to, say, the commercial applicant search, we now have both an inbound action for that 
We also have the exact same thing for the personal applicant search. So if something you want to do from like a, the personal applicant standpoint, you have inbound actions uh, that we uh, provide there as well. And with the last two things that we're able to put in for Zapier with this, this release is going to be the applicant update for both commercial and personal lines customers and inbound actions. So if a personal or a personal lines or a commercial lines customer is updated outside the system, that information can come in and then do stuff inside EasyLinks. So you might be asking yourself, hey, this is really neat and all, but how do I go about getting set up with Zapier? What do I do to get this all created and start making zaps? Very, very simple. Let's go back here to EasyLinks and I'll show you. If you come here to where it says um, partners and you click on connect, what you're going to want to do is scroll down to where it says Zapier. You can read more about it. Or if you click learn more, it's going to ask you to fill out this nice little lead info sheet. And then one of our onboarding team members is going to reach out to you and get you all set up with this feature. If you're not utilizing Zapier and you have external systems that you work with beyond EasyLinks, I really encourage you to get this set up. It's really powerful tool to be able to pass information in and out of the different systems, okay? So very, very, very important. Now, the last thing that we kind of want to talk about today um, has to do with additional trainings, right? So one of the things that, 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 that we've heard or an item that's kind of come up before is uh, from users is that we've heard that um, one, you might not be fully aware of the different things that you that you have in the system, the different options that you have with the, the features that you purchased. Or two, you might just not know everything that it actually does or how to even do the different workflows in it, right? So everybody needs additional training. And our support and onboarding and our support training team have been extremely uh, diligent and working really, really hard on creating a whole bunch of new trainings for everybody. So one thing that I want to kind of highlight today here at the end are some of the different trainings that we have available. And these trainings are available to anybody, whether you're an EasyLinks customer or a prospect, maybe somebody who doesn't have the EasyLinks management system and you want to see how maybe we do things and maybe you're thinking of becoming an EasyLinks customer. All of these webinars are open to anybody, right? So what you need to do is just uh, come right over here and click on support. There we go. And the one thing I want to direct you to right here is going to be webinars. Now we have a huge list of webinars that we have here in the system. We have some on Monday for direct bill commissions. We have some for personal lines uh, uh, quoting the rating engine, right? We have some for the EasyLinks accounting system, how to actually get it set up and get your admin set up and everything ready to go. Um, setting up your actual EasyLinks account. What does that mean? Rating engine, consumer quoting, the management system, right? We have management system 101 for personal lines accounts. This is an extremely, extremely popular, very, very valuable webinar if you want to learn how to use the EasyLinks management system. And we also have it for commercial lines. So for our commercial lines customers who really want to know how to maximize the EasyLinks management system and take advantage of all of the great commercial lines offerings that we have that a lot of people just might not know about, I highly encourage you to watch either the 101 session, um, which is really, really, really powerful. We also have the direct bill uh, commissions 2.0, how that works. Uh, we also had then on Wednesday have another commercial lines and then here we go. This is the one I was trying to get to. We have a 102, like another version. It's the second level of that. So there's a lot to cover in commercial lines and we have two different sessions for it. So what do you have to do to get set up? Well, all you got to do is come once again here. If you click on easy links, click on support, come over to here where it says webinars, find one that you want. Maybe you're interested in the rating. Go ahead and click the go to web. All you're going to do is it's going to let you know when the actual webinar is or when you want to get set up to register for it. Enter in your, your information organization and click register. That's it. That's all you've got to do. Now, another really cool thing that we have here is you can access previously recorded webinars. So we have other webinars that are already existing. So maybe, maybe the times don't work out for you for the webinars that we have, but you still want to get the information. You still want to learn how to do something. That's fine. You can watch one of our pre-recorded sessions, and we've got a lot for CSRs and producers. These are the different webinars that we have. You know, if you're an admin, these are webinars that are extremely important for an admin to pay attention to, 
right? These are some of the featured videos that we want to kind of show off to you guys. Now, what's the difference between attending one of these recorded ones and then one of the live webinars? To be Now, to be clear that these are live. These will be a live webinar that you register for. The difference has to do with the very end of the webinar. At the very end of the webinar, we have about 10 to about five to 10 minutes that we open up for a live discussion, right? So if people have a question that they want to ask or if they need a little bit more clarification on something that was actually covered in the webinar, we unmute people's mics and we let you ask the question live right there in the webinar. There's generally two people that are running it. There's the presenter who's going through everything and then we kind of have a moderator who's you know looking for people who are going to have questions and then unmuting people and, and letting you guys ask your questions. But I really encourage you guys, if you need some training on how the system works, these are extremely valuable tools and instruments that you can use. You can do live webinars, and they're engaging interactive trainings. And I say interactive because at the end there's the live Q&A. Or if you, if you don't have time to attend a live one, that's fine. Everybody's schedules are busy. You can click right here and you can actually access all of our previous recorded webinars. That way you can still reap the benefits of the training. Uh, that we have here. So anybody interested in learning how to use the system, learning the different features that you have in a product, I encourage you guys to definitely take part in these webinars or at least go watch some of the recorded ones. That way you get a really good grasp of the system that you've purchased EasyLinks and how to maximize its value for your agency. And there you have it. And that's all the time we have for our show today. I want to thank everybody for viewing today. Uh, seeing some of the cool items that we had come out in Q3. We really hope you enjoyed it. And as always, if you're interested in some of our other Q3 items, you can go back to our last month's EasyLinks live show where we highlighted some other Q3 items that went out in the release. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We appreciate it. And as we say here in Texas, we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.